So our first examples are going to demonstrate, again, the differences between the general antiderivative and the definite integral. So in this lesson, you're going to see the same techniques that we've used in the past, but you're going to see that a need to simplify more before you begin or use your trig identities that you already know to be able to simplify the function. All right, so for our first example, we're looking at two general antiderivatives because they are indefinite integrals. So we're going to use our antiderivative functions. So I'm going to start with 8x to the fourth over 4. Understanding that the antiderivative of secant x tan x is just secant x, that gives my second term to be minus 5 secant of x. And since this is a indefinite integral, I'm going to use the family of functions with my plus my constant that is unknown at this time. I'm going to simplify this quickly. That gives me 2x to the fourth minus 5 secant of x plus c. That's my general antiderivative. For example, b, I have a function that is sine of theta over cosine squared theta. So right now, we do not have any quotient rules or any rules that can find the antiderivative if there is a quotient like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this using some trig identities. So I'm going to split this into two separate pieces. Since this is cosine squared of theta, I'm going to break that apart and make that 1 over cos of theta times the sine of theta over the cos of theta. And we're going to integrate when we do our simplification. So 1 over cos of theta, we remember, is a ratio identity that turns into secant of theta times sine over cosine turns into tan of theta d theta, and now this is the same function as we've done before. So understanding that the antiderivative of the function secant tan is just secant of theta, we have secant of theta, because it's indefinite, I'm going to include that plus c again. For example two, you can see two definite integral examples. So these are a little bit more complicated. You can see a polynomial sort of on top because I have a um, radical function that I'm going to have to simplify. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break this apart. I don't want to have a quotient in my um, derivative, so I want to break that apart. Make this 2t squared divided by t squared plus t, since this is t squared times the square root of t, I'm going to simplify that to t to the 5 halves divided by t squared, and then minus 1 over t squared. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is break it apart, divide everything by a t squared. That's going to simplify this to be 2 plus t and this is going to end up being t when I divide 5 halves by 4 halves. It'll be 2 plus t to the 1 half minus t to the negative 2 power. And that is what I'm going to integrate. So when I find my antiderivative, I have 2t plus add my 1. That's going to give me 3 halves divide by 3 halves, that's going to make me multiply by 2 thirds, minus t to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. Simplifying this out, that leaves me with 2t plus 2 thirds t to the 3 halves power plus 1 over t. And because my endpoints are defined, I'm going to run that from 1 to 9. So when I work through my math and I do my f of 9 function, I'm going to plug 9 into all of these values. That's going to give me 18 plus 18 plus 1 ninth. That's my f of 9. Then I have to take my f of 1 
and that's going to give me 2 plus 2 thirds plus 1. After I calculate that out, that gives me 32 and 4 ninths. For my very last example, you see a lot of trig functions in there. So I'm going to have to manipulate those a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do on top is I'm going to pull out a sine of theta. So when I pull that sine of theta out or factor it out, I end up with 1 plus the tangent squared of theta over secant squared of theta. Now if you remember your trig identities, 1 plus tangent squared of theta stems from those Pythagorean identities and that's equal to the secant squared of theta. So I can actually substitute in here secant squared of theta and then when I factor that out I can divide that out to be 1. So what I really want to do is integrate from 0 to pi over 3 simply the sine of theta d theta. I'm not done. I have to find the integral of that. So I integrate that sine of theta, which gives me negative cos of theta. I'm going to run that from the endpoint 0 to pi over 3. So I'll have to do a negative cosine of pi over 3 minus a negative cosine of 0. So if I know that the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, then negative cosine of pi over 3 is negative 1 half. If I know that the cosine of 0 is 1, and I know that negative cosine would give me negative 1, with that minus that's already there means I'm going to add a 1 to that, resulting in a value of 1 half.